Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love Online every Saturday. God wants to encourage his people. There's a lot of bad news out there. I mean, wars and rumors of wars or threats and and things looming overhead or threats of earthquakes and, and earthquakes happening, all kind of stuff. So let's go to Psalms chapter 4. And God wants his children to know that he's got us in the palm of his hands. And I'm going to read this real quick, and then we're going to tell a story. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? But know that the Lord has set apart him that hath, that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. God has got us, y'all. No matter what comes down the pipe, no matter what you hear on the news, God has got his people. Be encouraged when you feel a little shaky, a little wobbly, and a little fearful. Run to God like a little kid runs to his parent and buries his face in his parents' clothes and cries and waits for the parent to wrap his arms around him or scoop him up in their arms. Run to God. No matter what happens, it is humanly natural at times to get a little nervous or a little fearful. Rebuke the fear and run to God. He's the only one who can calm your nerves when everything around you is shaking like a leaf. He's the only one who can keep you in perfect peace when everybody is threatening war. He's the only one who can provide fully when your pockets are empty. He's the only one who can give you guidance that will keep you safe that will instruct you in the night season so that you're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off, hollering, what do I do? What do I do? Where do I go? Where do I go? God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. And first, Ezekiel 47. Now, starting at verse one, we're not reading the whole thing, just a few verses. After he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then he brought me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without. That's without means outside, on the out on the out on the outskirts, unto the outer gate by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forward, went eastward. He measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, the waters that were to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the loins. It's right under the belly. After he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. That means if you're not, if you're walking, you couldn't, 
You couldn't walk through it. You had to swim through it. And he said unto me, son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. And he said unto me, now this is what I want to say to you. A lot of times in the Bible, when you talk about trees and when you talk about seas, a lot of times that's also an allegory or symbolic of people. But I want you to hear this because these are the trees where the healing is on the leaves. So I want you to hear this and then I'm going to share something with you. This is also what it's going to look like in the millennial kingdom. So, but listen to this. Mm, mm, mm. Verse eight. Then he said unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea. Sea is another metaphor for people, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth and whithersoever the, ri the river shall come, picture it now, shall live. Wherever the river is flowing, wherever the, those waters go, those things shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come there, for they shall be healed. And everything shall live wherever the river comes. Mm, mm, mm. Now, what I want to talk to you about is... That is, picture that as God's living waters. God will replenish you. When he talks about the water that where you will never thirst again, that's the water Jesus referred to when he talked to the woman at the well. And the woman was taking everything he said literally, and he said, listen, I have water where you will never thirst again. And when the woman finally realized after he told her her private business that he was a man of God, that he was above all of that, then she ran around and evangelized. You see, when God floods your soul with living waters, you are not as susceptible to the elements of what's happening in the world. You're not as susceptible to the elements of the weather, to the elements of the signs of the times, the, the financial crushes, the problems, the international problems, the racial issues. You're not so overtaken by family fights and feuds and neighbors down the street that won't talk to you. You're not, you don't get caught up in that because what you're feeding off of is living water. Living water raises your sights. Living water strengthens you on the inner man. Living waters keeps you full of joy, keeps you full of peace. It helps you maintain your cool, so to speak. When everything is shaking and everybody's falling around you, what does Psalms 91 say? It shall not come nigh thee. It will not touch you. Can't touch this. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. Well, that's what's happening. The living water is our life source. That's the power of God, the Holy Spirit, that keeps us moving when it seems like the people of the world are in a coma. They're dummy down. They're paralyzed. Some of them are frozen in fear. They don't know which way to turn, nowhere to run to, nowhere to hide. They don't know what to do. They're at their wit's end, taking pills to wake them up, taking pills to put them to sleep, taking pills to calm them down, taking pills to help them not fall asleep and be able to do their work during the day. Got a pill for everything, but they don't have God's peace. 
They don't have God's living water. And that is what will help sustain you. Not your money, not your honey. God's living water. So it pays to get close, stay all up under his armpits. You may not talk to him for hours, but stay close to him in your heart. Whatever you do, don't lose sight of him. And please constantly ask him not to lose sight of you. See, God knows what's going on in the world. He knows what's coming down the pipe. He knows how to keep you safe. He knows, he knows exactly what to tell you to do or tell you not to do, tell you where to go, tell you where not to go. He knows how to keep you safe. What our part is, we must constantly pray for that ear to hear. So, you know, like, like, uh, like one of our members just got through saying, God spoke to them and said, talk to your mechanic. And the mechanic had a thing that she needed. So there are times when God would tell you what to do, who to go to, who to ask for help. When I was in a, a financial crisis and I didn't, the money was not there. God told me exactly who to borrow from and then gave me the money to pay them back within one month's time, pay them back in full. Some people lent me 4,000, some people lent me 200. But God told me who to go to, and that money was paid back quickly. So what I want to share with you is God will show you. There are times people don't obey him. So there may be somebody out there that's supposed to be your blessing, but they're not hearing and they're not obeying. So you have to go and borrow from someone else. But the beautiful part is God has a plan A, a plan B a plan C. These are called contingency plans. And no matter what your crisis, God's got you covered from point A to point Z. He does not run out of contingency plans. People may not obey God, but God will always have a way to help you. God, if you can't get to help, God will bring help to you. Know that you are in the safest place in your life when you're in Christ. Always know that. Always know it. I can't tell you how many times I felt pain in my heart and I asked God to remove it and I rebuked heart attack in the name of Jesus. I can't tell you the times that I needed help in my car and help was right there. I didn't even have the time to go and call AAA. Help was right, I mean immediate help. Willing help was right there. God's got you covered. And he will have you covered no matter what is going on in your life. Whether you're feeling on fire for God or whether you feel as cool as a cucumber and you're hoping you're still saved. No matter what, God's got you covered. You hear me? So don't lose heart. Don't lose your trust in God's love for you. God loves you with an everlasting love. He is mindful of you. He is on your side. He will never leave you. Did you hear those words? He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Forsake is another combination of words like forget you, abandon you, leave you in a lurch. God will never forsake you. Remember that. He is with you 24-7. He's closer to you than the breath coming out of your mouth. Always remember that that living water is your life source. And as long as you stay close to him, as long as you stay up under his armpits, nothing will by any means harm you. You are under the ark of safety. He's your raincoat. Okay, listen, let me go to it real quick.
This is part of, of something I wrote. On a much higher note, in chapter 21, John beholds the lamb and his bride. You know what? I'm going to read the part before that. Because we always get all nervous when we think the devil is rattling our cage. But we have to, when the devil reminds you of where you fall short, when the devil reminds you of where you're failing, when he starts accusing the brethren, you remind him of his future. And I want you to read this. I mean, I want you to hear this. Chapter 19 resonates with celebration and praise to the Lord for the marriage supper of the bride of Christ. Then chapter 20 shows how the dragon, the devil, is chained and bound for 1,000 years and afterwards released for a season. Then all the nations gathered with him for the final showdown at Gog and Magog. Are they surrounding the New Jerusalem? Suddenly, an intense, check this out, an intense supernatural blinding flash of light appears, and it is fire blazing faster and faster. Okay, fast forward. Uh, we'll deal with that later. In the next scene, there is a huge reckoning taking place. There is one on whom God takes perennial vengeance. Who is it? Then there is even more reckoning at the great white throne judgment for those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. The dreadful atmosphere is dark and ominous. There is such a terror in the air, an unbearable horror. Lost souls, as far as the eye can see, are utterly trembling. It feels so hopeless and overwhelming, such a dreadful setting of doom that can leave one speechless, sullen, and sad. Okay, fade out and fast forward to the next scene. On a much higher note, this is what I want you to hear. John beholds the lamb and his bride as he sees the new Jerusalem descending in all its glory, majesty, and splendor. Hark, hear the illustrious crescendo of praise resounding throughout all the heavens and the earth. Why is this? Because there is no more evil. Jesus, with his new name, the word, is victorious and triumphant. Question, how? Answer, read on. In chapter 22, zoom out slowly and soak in the luxurious scenic view of the most magnificent living waters, a river like dazzling liquid diamonds flowing straight from the majestic throne of God and the Lamb. Notice how the tree of life near the live sparkling river stands tall, yielding all its 12 fruits and leaves that heal. Now behold the Lamb, Jesus, the Word. Lo, he is the ruler and king over all, all that is throughout the whole universe. He is the King of kings, Lord of lords. His majesty and kingdom never ends. He reigns supreme and we reign with him forever and ever. Shout hallelujah. Give glory to his holy matchless name. He is Alpha and the Omega, the bright and morning star. Emmanuel, God is with us. Ergo, we will ever be with the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Be encouraged. Know that God is in our lives for more than one reason. He's in our lives for more than just to forgive us for sin. He's in our lives for more than just helping us avoid hell. He's in our lives because he's a father. He cares for us. He's watching out for us. He's providing for us. He's protecting us. He's guiding us. He's keeping all evils away from us. He's, he's shielding us from danger, seen and unseen. He warns us. He gives us dreams. He gives us visions. He keeps us as the apple of, our, of his eye. He provides. He feeds he enables us to dwell in safety. Remember the power that's in your God. Remember the authority. When God says the party's over, down goes the devil and all his minions. 
When God says everything comes to an end, that's when our beginning starts. That's when our eternity is full of joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of love, full of peace, full of excitement, exuberance, beauty, no danger, no sadness, no tears. So know that here or there, God's got us. He's got us coming. He's got us going. He's blessing us on all sides. My challenge to, to you is whatever you do, whatever you hear, whatever you see or feel, dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is your source. Always remember that. You're bored, you're restless, go to God. You're antsy, you're nervous, you got ants in your pants and you need to dance and you're running here and running there and busy doing this and busy doing that. Sometimes that's because there's a restlessness in your soul and you need to still your little happy hips down and allow God to minister to you. He's not necessarily calling holding court with you, or having a conference with you so you can run your mouth and go down all the litany of all your requests. Sometimes he wants you to be still and know that he is God. Be still and let him calm you. Be still and let him manifest himself to you. Sometimes even being too busy about God's work can eliminate his ability to touch you. Some, do you notice how Jesus would steal away from the crowd? He would steal away from doing ministry so that his father, which art in heaven, could minister to him. Well, that's what you should do too. That's what I should do. That's what we all should do. So God bless you as you reassert yourselves in hot pursuit of him. God bless you.